so I've heard that Fifty Cent um gave Drake advice after the Kendrick battle. Now the reason why that's crazy is because Fifty's always been like the troll of everybody. So to see him kind of give Drake this advice after getting his Las Vegas residency is really, really, really interesting. But yeah, recently I, I seen Fifty Cent um gave Drake some advice because essentially Drake made three hundred million off the Kendrick beef. Um, and, you know, due to the culture, the culture always feels like somebody loses these battles. But, you know, 50 came out and said, you know, I was telling him, it's, it's not him. I'm listening to on the outskirts. It's not you. Don't let yourself think that for a second on some real shit I said. They said you lost. Okay, well, what did you lose? Um, what exactly did he lose? If he got 300-something million in, on his last tour, you didn't lose a motherfucking thing. It's that moment you keep... Uh, you keep your creative energy in the right place and keep creating. If you slow down because you feel what the fuck the resistance will make you feel like your material isn't good, then you got to figure out how to keep pushing, how to keep creating because that's what it feels like to you at the moment. That's shit that's good for hip-hop. Now, this is why I knew this would happen like after a while because this whole beef was not a win or loss situation and what a lot of people don't really gather from these beefs is that the only people that benefit when rappers beef are the label owners. So if Kendrick is signed to TDE, if Drake has a deal with, um, I want to say Warner, uh, Drake, 400 million. Like these are the people who actually benefit from these beef. It's it's never the artist. So Drake um, reported 400 million mega deal with Universal. So who are the owner of music uh, Universal? I want to say it's Lucian Grange. All right, so it's Lucy and Grange. So, like, when you think about who won this beef um, between Drake and Kendrick Lamar, really, the label owner wins that beef. Because if Drake pulls in $300 million from his tour, um, that money is, is being broken down with Drake's label. And there was messages with Drake saying he's on tour like a slave. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, because it, it's just like the West Coast, East Coast beef with Tupac and, and, and Biggie. The people who benefited the most are the people who owned uh, Tupac and Biggie's music rights. So it was, it was Puff um, and whoever was owning Death Row. So when people see this, it's like, yo, blah, blah. no, the people who won are the people who really cashed in, who have the ownership of all the revenue that's being generated. People who are getting peace of Kendrick being at the Super Bowl. People who are getting peace of all the merch that's being sold. People who are getting beef, uh, peace of all the, 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 the shows that these guys are doing now and all the new streams. That are coming in. So I think the Spotify, DJ Academics put out who the most streamed um uh artists were. You gotta understand, like this this rap beef is cool for hip hop. That's why he's that's why 50 said this rap beef is cool for hip hop. It's not really <laughs> outside of that, everybody else is just kind of like getting the, the shit under the stick because we think it's real. And look, Drake still was the most streamed rapper um for the month of September. You feel me? So, like, even with all the rap beef, like, Drake is still going to beat everybody regardless because Drake is more universal. Um, Kendrick is definitely, but Kendrick has been dissing people since Control when he said, fuck the, uh, J. Cole, ASAP Rocky, Jermaine Cole, Drake, I got love for you all, but I'm trying to murder you on, on Big Sean's song. This is really nothing new of Kendrick doing this type of stuff. But it's really just new for this new generation of, of music consumers. But Drake was still the most streamed artist of September, you know, because his music is more universal. And I, I personally fuck with Kendrick. Like, for real, I listen to a lot of Kendrick music, probably more than I listen to Drake. So I'm saying this from a genuine perspective. So when I hear 50 give him this advice, um, it, it really makes you wonder, like, yo, bro, like, nobody really won. The, the Drake still did $300 million on a tour, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if you look at it from that perspective, like, who the fuck really won? You feel me? Who the fuck really won? Like, let's let's think about it. Um, 50 Cent just got his residency in Las Vegas. Congratulations. I mean, 50 Cent has been making a lot of big moves, too. But this is why it's so big, because, like, you know, I don't think this is a pick and a side thing. I think this is more just 50 saying, like, yo, bro, only culture really wants to care about who won or who lost. Like, truth be told, the, the the real people that won are both Drake and Kendrick at the end of the day because guess what? They both made hundreds of millions of dollars off this. Drake made hundreds of millions. Uh, Kendrick is going to headline the Super Bowl. 
this is a win-win for them. Um, kind of a win for us because we got to consume kind of a little bit of a negativity when it comes to hip hop beef. But for the most part, I found this pretty interesting that um Fifty said this because like I didn't even know Drake made three hundred million dollars on his last tour. Uh, truth be told, anybody who's not biased is gonna say that's not really lose if you ask me. People are still gonna fuck with Drake in two years. They're gonna forget this ever even happened. They're gonna go back and listen to Drake. Now there's a lot of things wrong, and there was a lot of things that got exposed about this beef because no one has really came at Drake and and essentially from a hip hop standpoint, kind of slaughtered him in that way and made it so viral and so big. Pause because when Drake and the difference is when Drake and um Pusha T were beefing, and when Drake was beefing with Meek Mill, that put Drake as like to a not to be fucked with standard. And this this whole situation came with a lot of different. Uh, revealing. I mean, if you see Drake and 50 right here chopping it up in Toronto. Drake and 50 right here chopping up in Toronto. They're over here talking. 50's laughing with him. So, like, w we get very caught up in the culture and, like, we forget to look at the stuff behind the smoke and mirrors. Um, I mean, I've, I've always felt that way and I think, um, I think it was, let me see, was it, um, Vince Staples said it best. Because he said when they asked him who do you think won the beef and he had the best response. Andrew. It's going up on social media. Don't trip, I got your back, bro. You don't want to know how I feel huh? about that shit, bro. All right, look, get with me after that. You really want to know how I feel about that how shit? You feel? I want to know. Yeah. I think um So I'm signed to Universal, right? Yeah. I've been signed to Universal since I was 17. Um I haven't got a back end. That means when you turn in an album, they give you payment. I haven't got a back end since 2017, 18. So I done been on the same record label for 13 years, so to say. That record label just folded all of its independent labels and subsidiaries into each other, which means how we was kids. You got Rockefeller, you got Def Jam, you got all these things. None of them exist no more. They fired all the heads of the labels, and if they didn't, they turned them into glorified a and They cut off 50% of the people who work in all these departments. Most of those people is us, people of color that come from hip hop and R&B and these other things, right? Then you got record labels opening up IPOs. You got record labels destroying their relationships with TikTok, Spotify, things that pay out artists mm. because they want to start their own shit. So then we getting priced out of our contracts. We getting priced out of our imprints. There are no labels basically that are incentivized to sign black music and it's happening in front of our eyes and while Taylor Swift is fighting for people to be able to have streaming money, niggas is on the internet arguing with each other about some rap shit. So that's how I feel about it, honestly. You see, it's a lot bigger. This whole thing was a lot bigger than we kind of grasped. Because end of the day, people just want to be entertained, right? We just wanted to be entertained. We didn't want to think about this from a real perspective of what's happening in the music industry. Um, how we seeing all these labels laying off people. Well, you know, sometimes it's due to due to a shift in uh, management or um uh, a, a new CEO coming in. And that's typically what happens at any company. But we've been seeing a lot of artists coming out and going against these big machines like Spotify, these big DSPs like Spotify. You've seen people even going back to vinyl or people even trying to be independent or people talking about how hard it is to be independent because certain people glorified it. But not everybody can really do it like Russ do it. There are a lot of entertainers and um, you got to think about it. A lot of black entertainers that are artists or musicians, the only thing that we really have to consider ours in the culture and really accumulate massive amount of wealth come from places like entertainment. And majority of these artists don't even own their masters. They're owned by people like Lucian Grange, who is who Drake is signed to right now. So even though Drake made three hundred million dollars on tour, that wealth has to be redistributed through a person who it's collecting majority of the revenue on these rappers and artists. And then if you even want to say this too, majority of these artists, they don't even negotiate. Only the top ones can negotiate their streams. There's a lot of ways to look at this, you know, but you let me know your thoughts about that. I think it's interesting that 50 kind of broke that down in that way. Um, because really, truth be told, nobody wins when the family feuds. Uh, we think that it's often a big deal and a good thing when people fight in battle, but Truth be told, somebody is really collecting a lot of money off of this that's not even involved in the beef at all, while there's still a lot of countless entertainers who are struggling to make a living. Um, so there's bigger things to worry about, truth be told. But yes, um, that's that. You guys let me know your thoughts about that.